Week 16. Day 106, On Valuing Your Own Opinion. I have often wondered how it is that every man loves himself more than all the rest of men, but yet sets less value on his own opinion of himself than on the opinion of others. Marcus Aurelius. Publicly refusing instant gratification, such as ordering a salad when everybody around you orders a pizza, can result in criticism from other people. If you lack trust in yourself, this negative feedback can cause self-doubt and compromise your long-term goals. As Marcus Aurelius points out, it's a curious fact that even though we consider ourselves the most important people in our lives, we still often value the opinion of others more than our own. Usually, people who are the opposite of what you want to accomplish criticize you out of fear of being inferior to you. If you manage to reach success, what does it say about them? Consequently, even if they aren't malicious by nature, you may sense resistance coming from their direction, often masquerading as good-hearted advice, but intended to make you conform to the status quo. While I doubt that there is a foolproof way to stop valuing the opinion of others more than our own, and I doubt that it would be smart to assume that we know everything best, forever, there is a way to protect yourself from self-doubt upon hearing criticism. It's really quite simple. Whenever somebody criticizes your choices, ask yourself if they can serve as a model for you. If your overweight friend ridicules your resolution to stop eating fast food, is his or her opinion valuable for you? Does he or she set a positive example and have the credibility to change your mind? If not, why listen to him or her? Day 107, On the Innocent Distractions Distraction and displacement seem innocent on the surface. How can we be harming ourselves by having fun, or seeking romance, or enjoying the fruits of this big, beautiful world? But lives go down the tubes one repetition at a time, one deflection at a time, 140 characters at a time. Stephen Pressfield While it may seem that I place self-discipline as the most important thing in life, I want to clarify that that's not the case. We weren't made for work alone and it's important to celebrate what life has to offer, particularly as a reward after a job well done. However, we weren't made for constantly entertaining ourselves and engaging in low-quality pleasures, either. These innocent distractions can make life more pleasurable, but at the same time a monster hides behind the innocence, developing an erroneous belief that there's nothing wrong with exceptions. An exception every now and then won't hurt you. But when you do it regularly, it isn't an exception anymore, it's a habit. And that's how people continue to drink fizzy drinks, while they said a long time ago they'd stop, how people continue spending money they don't have, even though they vow to make smart purchases, and how people watch TV instead of learning for their next exam. Doing it just one more time quickly converts into another, another, and yet another exception, and soon the exception becomes the new norm. Every time you catch yourself saying that you're going to do it for the last time, remember that, as Stephen Pressfield nicely put it, lives go down the tubes one exception at a time. Day 108, On Following a Routine I only write when inspiration strikes. Fortunately it strikes at night every morning. William Faulkner If you depend on inspiration to act on your goals, don't expect to achieve them quickly, if ever. The only way to ensure that you consistently advance toward your objectives is to establish a routine and force inspiration upon yourself. It works in the same way as with people who always feel hunger at the same time, they've accustomed their bodies to eating at the same hour every day. My preferred time to write is early morning. That's when inspiration strikes me, but it's only so because I established a routine and followed it religiously for years. Likewise, an inspiration to improve my foreign language skills strikes me at 9 in the morning because that's when I usually have language classes. Again, I don't rely on fickle and elusive motivation, I rely on a routine. You can benefit from routines when working on virtually any other goal. Always exercise at the same hour, and soon you'll train yourself to be ready for exercise at the same hour. Always meditate right after waking up and soon you'll find yourself automatically inspired to meditate upon getting out of your bed. 
Always set aside a fixed portion of your income each week or each month, and soon you won't even think twice before sending it away to your emergency fund. Making your life predictable by sticking to a set of routines might seem boring, but imagine how exciting it will be to finally accomplish your goals, thanks to following those routines. It also uses less energy when you follow the routines as a habit, so you can accomplish more with less energy, leaving you more time and energy for other things that increase your pleasure in the journey itself. Day 109, On the Size of Containers Moviegoers who were given fresh popcorn ate 45.3% more popcorn when it was given to them in large containers. This container size influence is so powerful that even when the popcorn was disliked, people still ate 33.6% more popcorn when eating from a large container than from a medium-sized container. Brian Wansink Sometimes weird tips can go a long way toward helping you accomplish some common goals such as losing weight. In the cited study, the size of the popcorn containers affected how much people ate from them. What's interesting is that, even if they didn't like popcorn, when they were eating it from a larger container, they still ate more than people who were eating from a medium-sized container. Conclusion? If you want to eat less, and consequently, increase your chances of success when dieting without the need for more willpower, Consume in smaller containers, smaller plates, bowls, and glasses. When the plate is bigger than the food on it, it looks like there's less food than when it's a small plate filled to the brim with a smaller amount of food. As a bonus random dieting tip for today, if you're struggling not to eat something, go and brush your teeth. For some strange reason, brushing your teeth, at least in my experience, makes you less likely to indulge probably because you don't want to lose the freshness you now feel in your mouth, plus things don't taste well immediately after brushing your teeth, so it gives you time to pause and think before you cheat. Day 110, On Moving Yourself Closer to the Finish Line People find it more motivating to be partly finished with a longer journey than to be at the starting gate of a shorter one. Chip and Dan Heath Think of the difference between having run the first 5 miles, or kilometers, out of 25 and having just taken the first steps of a 5 mile or 5 kilometer run. Even though they're so similar, according to best-selling authors Chip and Dan Heath, people are more motivated when they're facing the first option. Based on my own observations, I think the main reason for their findings is that people usually find it difficult to start something challenging. So if they can get past the first barrier and are partway there, with some achievements under their belt, they're fired up to continue. You can benefit from this observation by moving yourself closer to the finish line, yes, even if you've just set a new goal for yourself. The idea is to fool yourself that you're actually somewhere along into the journey, and not just about to start it, a proposition many people find so discouraging that they don't even begin. How do you do it? If you want to build a financial emergency fund, you can convince yourself that you're already on the right track because you have some source of income, while others have to find it first, or if not, that you have some things you can sell that are actually just money waiting to be converted into physical cash, you surely have something you could sell, so this always works. Just like that, you're no longer just getting started with the goal, you're already partly finished. Let's go with another example. Imagine you want to have a flat stomach or become more muscular. You're already partly finished with this goal when you can perform basic body weight exercises. People who can't need to learn them first, if you've read some articles or books about exercise, people who haven't have to educate themselves first, or if you have fit friends and support, others need to find it first, etc. Whatever your starting point is. Think of what you already have or what you've already accomplished and use it as a way of seeing that you're closer to the finish line than you thought. Day 111. On Patience with Mindset Changes. Nothing important comes into being overnight, even grapes or figs need time to ripen. If you say that you want a fig now, I will tell you to be patient. First, you must allow the tree to flower, then put forth fruit, then you have to wait until the fruit is ripe. 
So if the fruit of a fig tree is not brought to maturity instantly or in an hour, how do you expect the human mind to come to fruition, so quickly and easily? Epictetus Here's a rule everybody would be wise to remember, don't expect to change the negative habits you've been engaging in for years over the course of a few days or even a few weeks. Mindset changes, in both positive and negative directions, take time to develop. At the very least, it will take you months or even years to eradicate negative habits and traits from your life. Getting angry at the timeline is futile because you can't change the past. All you can do now is do your best to stay faithful to your new resolutions and be patient. If you're starting from zero, without a vice you first need to get rid of, it will obviously take you less time to acquire the virtue you're seeking, as you don't have to reverse the negative effects of the vice. Even so, it doesn't mean that you'll be able to implement a permanent change overnight. Just as it takes time for fruit to ripen, so it takes time for a mindset to mature. A new trait or habit only becomes firmly ingrained in your identity with the passage of time and a growing number of experiences that reinforce it. Think of it as learning how to play basketball. No matter how much talent you have, you still need to take thousands upon thousands of shots to build muscle memory and develop a sixth sense for shooting the ball. Since you can shoot hoops 24-7, it usually takes years to become a great player, and there's no way to shortcut the process. Mindset changes are the same. One successful shot doesn't make you a great basketball player. A consistent series of successful shots does, and for something to be considered consistent, it needs to be repeated over a long period of time. Day 112, on self-licensing. Past good deeds can liberate individuals to engage in behaviors that are immoral, unethical, or otherwise problematic behaviors that they would otherwise avoid for fear of feeling or appearing immoral. Annecy Merit Self-licensing, also known as moral licensing, is a phenomenon in which doing something good makes you more likely to do something bad. This irrational behavior is visible in many walks of life, including political correctness, prosocial behavior, and consumer choice. Being aware of this danger and remaining vigilant when it's most likely to manifest can help you avoid it. Basically, it comes down to monitoring your actions when a good behavior inflates your ego, say, you resisted a temptation to eat a piece of cake at work, or when you're telling yourself that you've earned the right to indulge yourself, just because you did something you consider good for your goals. Here are several situations in which self-licensing can rear its ugly head seeing a great deal when shopping and thinking that, since you're going to save so much money, it's intelligent to buy it, but you don't realize that you don't actually need it. Going through an aisle with healthy food and buying something with a healthy label, and then proceeding to buy some sweets because, after all, you're eating healthy, so why not indulge yourself every now and then? Eating a huge post-workout meal to recover after exercise and fooling yourself that you've burned so many calories that one meal isn't going to replenish them, while in fact you're eating twice as much as you burn during exercise.